all right y'all welcome welcome to the technus corner let me have a little bit of a vape interesting kettle of fish today and by that saying i have no idea what it actually refers to except a kettle of fish is that even the right saying i don't know i'm going insane because i uh was going to do a video essentially what we're doing is an amazonian special so we got our box here of our recently delivered and by recent i am being quite loose on that i've been avoiding this for a little time now but i thought it a great video to establish in relation to what's in the box and how best to go about buying said items in the box so there's a pauperé of different items on the agenda today mainly we will be centering around some specifications what to look out for i want to jump on amazon sometimes just like many others have been conned as a result of products and or not reading the fine print or perhaps reading the fine print and trying to work out what exactly it means so best etiquette and best protocol in relation to this sort of thing i'm going to try to impart on you all so that you understand what's going on so that you understand in relation to how you can best go about purchasing the right cables essentially for yourselves in this day and age in this tech age so let's get stuck in and let's take a look at what's in the box in the box in the box today it came in a two or three parcels so i will probably have the relevant information in relation to the items which we are discussing come up on the screen and you guys will see in fact that yeah they were bought recently and also i want to talk about the pricing so that you don't get stooged or hosed in the wrong way because sometimes to cut a long story short you all to impart this on you before we go any further a cable's a cable, okay, and its job is to meet its specification. So keeping that in mind, if it meets its specification, it doesn't matter how much it costs, okay? Job is done. Quality-wise, there might be other things, but generally, if it's part of a specification in this day and age, it's probably also associated with a standard, and if it's meeting both those agendas, then it should be to a specific spec. And no, this isn't a pyramid scheme, but yeah, let's get into the examples and maybe I might shed some more light on what the hell I'm crapping on about. So welcome to the Technos Corner. I'm your host, Seb Luca. Don't forget to hit that like and sub button and let's go. So first things first, what's in the box today is on the agenda. I shall open up this per se and we'll get a better view. I'm putting on a little bit of weight, y'all. I'm self-conscious, so don't write that I'm a heifer in the comments section, but any other interaction in relation to comments, hitting that like button and that sub button if you haven't already. Comments in relation to any of your experiences or whatevs. Just chuck them in there, even if it's spasticated talk in relation to woke stuff. Uh, honestly, I need to take negative publicity if it exists just to get ahead. And this is a good video that should go out there to a lot of people in relation to a few items that I'm going to discuss today. Best way of handling a purchase of these set items. So first things first, we got ourselves a USB 3.0 cable. And I'll show all the advertising material per se. This is all from Am Amazon. And I want to discuss going through it as I did. And honestly, you know, this USB 3.0 cable is one thing. Okay. We've got ourselves, where is it? This USB-C to USB-C female to male times three right angles. That's another thing that we got. Okay. So little bits and bobs to make my life a little bit easier. Things that were needed. A couple of cat cables, five meters in length, both of those. 
and also a HDMI cable. And this cable's rather lengthy at 20 meters in length. And we'll talk about all the costs and whatnot associated with these and how I went about purchasing them. Because essentially I went for pretty much the cheapest items that would meet spec and hopefully be in a position to hold people accountable if it doesn't get refunds or exchanges if necessary. Unfortunately, I've left this so long that it's past the Amazonian time frame of acceptance. Don't know what that means if I haven't opened the bloody packet. The funny part is... Some of these ironically will be very interesting because if I haven't opened the packet and they're like totally fine for a return, well, let's just get it a little bit into it and you'll see what I'm talking about when, especially when we get to this HDMI cable, frankly. So let's go. Yeah, so we've been live streaming at the Technus Corner in recent as well. And that is the most recent live stream of thumbnail. Uh, but in relation to that, it was in relation to a edited United in Tech that's been changed to Tech Time podcast. And yeah, got all the bits and bobs and PC tech news in the last, say, month or so, rounded up for all of you. So check that out as well. While you're at the Technus Corner, you've arrived. And I apologize, but there is no free Wi Fi. Disclaimer aside, Let's get stuck right into what we're here for, which is learning a bit more about how to tell about your USB cable in relation to if it supports high speed or whatnot, because essentially we're going on a bit of a spree. The sprees occurred on Amazon, but let's get into what I dealt with and we'll talk about it a little less willy nilly if you get my drift. So we're starting off with this high speed cable. USB 3.0 cable specified on what is the packet, okay? And keeping that in mind, this cable is a six meter cable and it's an extension cable. It's got a female to male, okay? So I can connect up flash drive to it and this can be all the way connected to the computer if desired. Yeah, essentially I've got some little nuances. I've got some little things that need to be addressed with this cable already, okay? Keeping that in mind, just a bit of a just a bit of a history tour. One great thing about USB technologies is that they're always getting faster. The original USB 1.0 topped out at a mere 1.5 megabits per second. While today's newest USB 4 devices sport speeds of up to 40 gigabits per second. To get your desired speeds from your USB devices, you'll need a USB connector cable that's rated for them. And even if you're cutting out the middle man by using, say, a flash drive per se, which is, uh, say, like one of these I've got hanging from me chain because it's me gold chain. I've got bling, bling, bling with the flash drives. It's still useful to know what you can learn about USB devices by looking at their markings and connectors. The most reliable way to determine the speed of a USB cable is to check its specs and documentation, y'all. So like I said, specs, specs, and more specs. We should list its USB protocol and speed in gigabits per second or megabits per second. However, if the documentation is not available, looking at the connector type can give a rough estimate of speed, okay? USB-C cables tend to offer faster speeds than USB-A cables, with USB-C maxing out at 40 gigabits per second. But not all cables are designed to hit these top speeds. And with that being said, let us uh, change the old Senio. So hopefully we can deal with this scene and it helps address some of the problems that people may have with USBs by helping to identify some. So here we've got some USB variants of cables. So you've got the USB micro B, which is just over here. You've got your lightning USB, you've got your USB C. And today we're going to be concentrating on a both a USB C and USB A. All right. So they're the, what's pretty much 
pressing forward going to be the major ones that we're dealing with and everything is trying to get in on USB-C at the USB 4 standard slash 40 gigabits plus plus slash we're on to almost 80 now and some of my information may seem outdated as well but you know if you're here you're probably looking at something like this to begin with okay and it's a great starting point to learn from any ways so what does high speed mean in a USB cable? Well, USB-C cables, so what we got over here, all right, the round ones, right, tend to offer faster speeds than USB-A cables over here, okay? While USB-C cables max out at, let's just go by 40 gigabits per second, but with that in mind, not all cables are designed to hit these top speeds. Understanding USB standards and looking for logos near the connectors can also help determine the cable's fastest compatible standards. So if we have a look over here, what you're missing to the left is, actually let's move it to the side, is USB 2.0 at 480 megabits per second. Ah, uh, can we get this just legit to a guide to USB standards, y'all? And you can see also the type of connection logos that are associated with. So USB 4, 40 gigabits per second at the 40. USB 4, 20 gigabits per second at the 20. Okay, USB 3.2 Gen 2 by 2, 20 gigabits a second at the 20. Okay, USB 3.2 Gen 2, 10 gigabits a second five gigabits a second and just to confuse matters more we got thunderbolt 3 and thunderbolt 4 both hidden at the 40 gigabits per second okay keeping that in mind these things will come into play when we look at what we're being given regarding the information for the el cheapo products at amazon in a second's time okay because to be honest and to be brutal even I make mistakes when I'm purchasing rather quickly and trying to save a bop or two without reading the fine print. And even when you read the fine print, you have to try to like decipher what it is. And then you go, I guess, to the uh, reviews and the reviews look good. So you assume it might be one or the other. I'll explain more in a second, y'all. Because uh, with that being said, it brings us to our first item, which is the good old... USB 3.0 extension cable. And yeah, the brand is called Zekulwer. 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 I, I, I don't know what the brand's called, honestly, frankly. I'm, I'm sorry about that. But the connector type is USB type A as specified. Cable type, USB, compatible device, scanner. So look, essentially, I'll go over the nitty gritty but what we'll do is we'll put on the the material that we had come up essentially for me okay so to make it a little bit clearer i'll scan through the feature sets of it it's a braided high speed cable it doesn't look braided on the outside it definitely may be braided on the inside uh compatible devices scanner playstation television personal computer xbox and printer the length options that comes in is two meters five meters and six meters and the price accordingly is for the two meter at 11.99 to 18.99 depending on length okay and that's in australian dollars in the amazonian australian websites and i opted for the six meter cable now one thing to look out for regarding usb 3.0 cables is there is a five meter length specification that was associated with usb 3.0 that the traversal of the signal could not travel further than five meters without deterioration occurring. So if these cables are very high quality, there is some sort of buffering mechanism within the cable itself that enables it for being a boost. It is quite girthy, okay? So I'm hoping that this, if I connect my 4K camera up to it, will transmit that 4K signal something to look out for people and something that's going to have to be verified 
whether even though this is a six meter 3.0, five gigabits a second cable that is specified, okay, and it says it down over there, right, specified whether it is actually capable of doing its job, okay? So on the other hand, other features of this include universal compatibility, the cable can extend the USB connection of various devices, including hubs, printers, card readers, Bluetooth adapters, USB flash drives, scanners, hard drives, mice, and keyboards, etc. or the mouse, you know. But uh, durable and reliable, supposedly the marketing material continues on. The cable is flexible, durable, and has gold-plated connectors that maintain optimal and clear signals with less loss of bandwidth. It is also a plug-and-play device requiring no drivers for universal systems. Faster speed for data transfer. The cable has a transfer rate output of five gigabits per second specified. Keeping that in mind, this is the marketing material in relation to it. USB 3.0 extension cable specified again. So female to male, and that's what I'm referring to in relation to, okay? And universal, universal compatibility in relation to and it has backward compatibility with USB 2.0 devices. So these uh, cables always generally will have backwards compatibility, and that generally applies to almost all cables in this day and age. Even like NVMe's, Gen 4 NVMe storage um, SSDs and whatnot are backwards compatible. Um, they'll just run at that slower speed and stuff. Something to note, y'all. But okay, well, this is where it gets me right. High performance, the cable has a thick oxygen 326 22 awg copper core that reduces transfer impedance and ensures stutter-free signal transfer. The triple shielded foil braid ground provides a maximum resistance from EMI, RFI and superior signal quality. The four core structure ensures that different signals do not interfere with each other. So this is all specified in relation to the information just down in here. Okay, so I went with the six meter at the 1899. It was the most economical at the time. And I bought, I bought the item on the 5th of February, so just a little while ago. Okay, now the problem I have with this is this right here, okay? Extend for VR. Say goodbye to a short USB cable. Extend for Oculus Rift Sensor. Okay, extend your USB IP camera. Okay, two of these are uh, complete and utter BS. Simple as that. The job I need this for is not as heavy duty as USB-C to USB-A 5 gigabits a second rated transfer ability of the cables and whatnot. But if we go back to over here, there is USB 3.2 Gen 1, 5 gigabits a second. And then you have to hope that USB 3.2 Gen 2 at the 10 gigabits a second, a USB A device is capable of handling. Okay. Because generally those devices will pop out at five gigabits per second okay bringing us back to the extension for vr the required bandwidth that's allocated and i had a really good test that could show the bandwidth requirements i don't have the oculus currently set up because it's been a fresh install of windows per se but there are some additional programs that you do there and it does a running test which is really interesting, really good. We'll talk about testing morphology in relation to other tests that you should make sure have been done and or cables have passed a little further in. But in relation to this USB 3.0, it will test it straight away and it'll say fail or not in relation to how much it can push through. We know USB 2.0, 540. We know it'll be five gigabits a second if it's true to its word, okay? But unfortunately, that bandwidth is still not quite enough to sustain what is in this day and age uh fully fledged vr okay so you need something that is a little bit more robust so with that being said for example i've got a usb c here to usb c cable connected directly to the back of my machine and it's wired with also fiber optics okay 
um, that cable, if we go back to this, is rated at, I think, 20 gigabits a second. I apologize. So it's a great example piece. If we change this setting for just a moment, that, that cable, which is this one, a cable creation cable, I got two or three of these items that were all five meters or longer in the hopes that the three of them would give me three options that still cost less than the OEM cable that was of the metaverse requirement, which cost over $120. This one, I believe, was my more pricier variant. This is five meters and is rated for 10 gigabits a second data sync, while the metaverse one was only rated for five anyway. Five is supposedly okay, but not. It has to be like slightly faster than that for some reason. So um, this also has, uh, what was really important with it was free amp fast charging. So it had enough juice where other cables, so this was a five meter cable, and up to 10 gigabits a second, output to three amps, okay? Backwards compatible with USB 3.0. This is USB-C to USB-C, y'all, okay? Okay, so as you can see that. Major point about this cable is the other cables, which I had, I got two others, which I use as extension cables. One, which is a USB-A, okay? The thicker standard USB to a USB-C. That's great. It has enough bandwidth av availability to run the VR properly, at least from first impressions, but it hasn't got enough capability to be able to power the VR headset at the same time enough for it not to drain down while using it powered on. So over time, it'll sustain itself longer period of time than if it wasn't connected, but it won't indefinitely hold a charge, get me? While this cable will with the three amps. So that's something to look at as well in relation to charging values and whatnot of specific cables. That's something I wasn't even going to address, but I'm glad I did for you all. So coming back to it, these are some things to look at just in relation to this USB 3 extension cable which honestly, I just need for a 1080p camera and um, take that extension lead that's a little bit shorter than that one and use that for some other little bits and bobs like, you know, so I don't have to lean into the back of the case the whole time. So cable management's going to be hella crappy, but at least I'll be sorted in that relation quality of life. So that brings us to an interesting uh, little contraption and I'll give you the rundown on it. You can uh, read read ahead if you like. $8.99 for a pack of three, okay? The product information on the right, okay, was located all the way at the bottom, at the bottom side, on the left side, past all the other scrolly, scrolly stuff that Amazon likes to put in your face, okay? What I read first was what is here. Let me sum up my experience with what is this USB-C to right angle connector female for male for, essentially I got it as a little tidbit for perseverance of these connections. Over here on my computer, I've got a, USB-C port and a right angle would bring the cable down rather than hang over and essentially like the marketing material may suggest uh, less strain more space no need to bend cables when charging so great right here ours other and that has happened over years of use of cables this is exactly what occurs and trying to minimize that and the e-ways essentially another port 90 degree right angle adapter offer you a better gaming experience okay so that's pretty cool as well because it goes down and you can strip it around your leg and when you've got something in your other hand it's easy to mitigate that virtual reality space with those right angles if you get my drift you know wink 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 but that being said we've got another one y'all and this is where we start looking at uh specs as well which are being advertised aluminium alloy housing that's a direct 
uh, correlation to the product itself, okay? USB-C 3.2 right angle adapter, all right? That's what we got in this box. Right angle USB-C male to USB-C female adapter, all right? Nothing more to it. In the box here, it says supports 4K, 8K video transfer, charging up to 100 watt, data transfer speeds up to 40 gigabits per second, aluminium alloy housing, compact and stylish, okay? It's got all the little bells and whistles. Now, if we come back to this over here, okay, it's called the Base Sailor Right-Angled USB-C Extension Adapter. It claims to offer data transfer speeds of up to 10 gigabits a second, which is lower than the 40 gigabits per second transfer rate advertised in the next paragraph, pretty much. So I was a little confused already. Based on the information provided, it seems there is a contradiction in the product description on the one hand, the product is advertised as having a transfer rate of 10 gigabits per second, while on the other hand, it's advertised as having a transfer rate of 40 gigabits a second. Honestly, both would have been fine for my user case, but this is something worthwhile because when I'm buying spec for performance and price for performance, I want bank for buck as well. So the discrepancy is confusing, frankly. It may lead to many customers, including myself, potentially having unrealistic expectations about this product's capabilities now that I've got it in my hand, y'all. Because to be brutally honest with you all, I had other points that I wanted to address in relation to these, and I only noticed this after the fact. <laughs> so now I'm freaking out, all right? Freaking out. Because that's $8.99 of my dimes. I don't have no more, all right? Okay. Is it possible with the different transfer rates are associated with different versions of models of the product or that there is an error in the product description? Without more information, it's difficult to say for sure. However, in general, it's important to be cautious when purchasing products online and to carefully read the product descriptions, reviews to ensure that you are getting what you expect, y'all. So the reviews for this product, look, you've got 29 ratings at one two three four four and a half freaking stars so you had a shit ton of people already go well there's no problem meet spec okay well in the title it's 40 gigabits per second female to male extender right offer data transfer rates of 10 gigabits a second right and then when you get all the way to the bottom data transfer rates of five gigabits per second the fudge the fudge, because 5 gigabits a second would have been the most useless amount of USB-C to USB-C connectivity I would have ever have gotten. You know what I mean? Like, we're going back to those days, all right, already on these connectors. Why Boba? Okay. So, yeah, something else to look out for because I need to verify this now. To verify this, I'm going to have to do some speed tests on my NVMe drives and whatnot and find out how fast these shall fly once I put them as the middleman or the interconnection between other devices that really let rip. So that's something to look out for, okay? Also, again, the charging capabilities, if you put it on the side of a laptop per se, to have a better feel and connection point because of other things, maybe other dongles or things around there, then 100 watt charge, can it handle the in-between the 100 watt charge to charge that device per se another thing that will have to be verified and to look out for when you're looking at these devices because like i mentioned at the beginning not all cables are designed to hit these top speeds and understanding usb standards and looking for logos near the connectors can also will help determine the cable's fastest compatible standards all right so this is why we look at these things and we have a look at all the uh, marketing material because sometimes this Amazonian stuff, to save a quid, bop, or two, or a dime, or a dollar, then you have to expect that not everything is going to look as flash as you would expect. But after that, after looking at this, okay, and the measurements, after 
being asserted that it's USB-C 3.2 right angle adapter. And then if we go back to USB-C 3.2, okay, is it Gen 1, Gen 2, or Gen 2 by 2? So we've been told it's 10 gigabits a second, and then we've been told it's not 20, but it's actually 40 at the USB 4. But there's actually been a development. This image is from around mid last year, around later on at the start of this late last year, they changed the specifications again, just to confuse regarding USB. So USB 4, went back to USB 3.2 and or 3.3. I'm not 100% sure now because I'm a bit lost in the, all the USB as well, but has dropped back and is a 40 gigabits a second one as well. So they sort of shifted them all back and like clustered them. And then you've got the scaling on the 10, the 20, the 20, the 40. Thunderbolts 4040. 40. Uh, we've got 80s coming out. That's why they, I guess they couldn't keep going up. They just wanted to cluster it back down again. I mean, USB 2.0 is sitting there going, hey, useless for every day and age, high tech gadget in this day and age, unfortunately, except for your bare minimums. But understand that fast devices that don't require much bandwidth in relation to like your mice and things like that, right? They won't be slowed down by these speeds. So if you have peripherals, it's safe to say you can chuck them into those USB 2.0 slots, okay? It's when higher amounts of data needs to be transferred, like the 4K camera, for example, that you require something that can have that, you know, five gigabits a second minimum. So that brings us to our next item on the agenda and one of our more interesting items. I'm all about prices and whatnot. And what we've got here is a, a very, it's very small, but you can see that. Oh, you can't see it, but trust me, it says HDMI 8K, HDMI 2.1 cable, 20 meters or 65.6 feet made in china but it's also got a very trusted ultra certification here and it's ultra certified cable hdmi ultra high speed with the little logo and everything 20 meters the brand is bridge g ata series and to top it all off it is a fiber optic hdmi version 2.1 cable all right without the hdmi uh without the fiber optics right this cable can only run about five meters before signal lo signal loss on 8k is observed or 4k at 120 hertz so the higher frame rates and whatnot so keeping that in mind i've got a cable that runs underneath my mouse mats all along the bench and it barely makes it from one computer to the capture card in the other. So this cable was overkill, but I knew I would need it for another use case scenario someday in the future. Okay, this is where you guys gonna freak out, right? So here we got something to note. This is sort of what it looks like, okay? So nice and pretty, okay, it's pretty. But HDMI 2.1 certified. Only 1% of cables on the market pass HDMI 2.1 certified. Probably meant certification, but it's got that ultra certified cable, HDMI ultra high speed, okay? It's got 8K, 10K source slash bridge G slash marketing HDMI insignia. So we're looking, we're looking schmitten, all right? What else has it got? It mentions in the marketing material and we're going to get into what's actually written specifically because remember you have to read through this and you have to check the specs and you don't want to get hosed y'all because 48 gigabits per second high bandwidth is what ak cables are rated for in that regards hdmi 1.4 10.2 gigabits a second hdmi 2.0 18 gigabits per second 
HDMI 2.1 is what we are told to have have is 48 gigabits per second. All right. So that's even faster than the uh, US buy uh, C at the 40 or the Thunderbolt. Okay. Here's again uh, one other thing just before we continue on returning to the previous product. That right angle in the marketing material itself, it mentioned 40 gigabits a second, 100 watt fast charge as well. So that one, two, three, contrary to which one it is, I'm going to find out and I'll let you guys know in a communal post on the community feed once I establish which one it is, just as a reference point to the video, just so that we can establish what it is because that's baffling to me now after I've noticed that after I've got the item, I, I couldn't believe it. You know, I just went with what it said at the beginning. But coming back to what we're dealing with here, on one note, I'm going to teach you one thing about this cable quickly, and that is a fiber optic HDMI cable, unlike a 5 meter maximum cable in the 8K variant of a standard cable, with the fiber optics you can add the length, okay? But what you find is you have then a an input and an output. And if you connect that cable the wrong way around, it actually will not display and all work correctly at all. So you may not realize this, but you may think you've got a faulty cable. In fact, you just got to flip it the other way around. And generally it does say source and or input and whatnot or display or whatnot. That's one thing to look out for if you get into these HDMI cables. But with that being said, let's get into the specifications and what we're dealing with y'all. Because here is uh, another option, right? And I'll tell you why we got this other option here. Because if we go back to this option here, I apologize. And the whole point is price for performance, y'all, okay? So if we're going price for performance, this 20 meter cable currently costs $237.53. You heard correctly, that's $237.53 for this cable, okay? This cable I got on my hand, like, like, like I could like tuck it under my shirt and, and walk out of the store, no one would notice. Two of those, 500 bucks. 500 bucks for two of those, okay? Bridgie. So I purchased this item on the fifth, okay? And can I be honest with you? Let's just go through the specifications. Look, to cut a long story short, the item cost me 75 bucks. Okay, $75. Now the five meter option is 128. 10 meters, 111, 15. Okay, I, I chose it because it looked like the best quality, had the specs, was the right price. Okay, now shopping around, this I noticed over time. This is why it drew my attention. This is why I wanted to do this video in relation to shopping savviness on Amazonia, right? Is because I noticed this go up the 20 meter cable, go up to $155. Now I'm come back today to do the video and it's 230 seven freaking dollars all right okay so on a you know around it amazon's got this dodginess attached where it's got a one meter cable here is twenty dollars and a one meter a cable 2.1 certified cable is twenty dollars 99 here and look at all those ratings and if you multiply that and put 20 meters then 230 dollars doesn't sound too stupid well if you're that idiotic like i said a cable has to meet spec y'all okay so had that been the price for this cable to begin with i never would have purchased it for the love of god okay so i did some snooping and i said what would we do if i was in your shoes and today i was to scour amazonia australia yeah, I found this 20 meter cable, $103.99. It doesn't look too shabby as well. Fiber optic, that's why it's thinner. The fiber optic allows for that thinness. 8K, 60 hertz, 4K, 120 hertz, 144 hertz, EARC compatible, PS5, Xbox Series X, PC TV, 20 meters, fiber optic cable, 48 gigabits a second, ultra high speed, hasn't got a high speed certification. I hope the God it has. If we if go back out here, also there was one other thing I noticed, 31% drop on the coupon to save more at the uh, checkout. Would have dropped it to around what? The uh, $75 I spent on the other cable. 
okay so there is a market rate and you shouldn't go above that when it comes to cables back in the day we used to go to cables in relation to it and go on ebay and yeah like i said i learned from there i'll get two to five to ten cables and one or two would fail and the rest if they met spec work for the rest of their lives and that's how, how you get these cable boxes and stuff you don't go into jb hi-fi and spend 80 to 120 dollars for a cable you can get four of for the same length and or twice three times four times the freaking length you know what i mean like be real here you know think people and the chances of you failing four times over on something that's written there plain as day you've checked the specs now i'm imparting knowledge on you all and hopefully that rounds your perspective on it just don't waste the money on the oem like they wanted me to spend over 120 for the cable for the br i got three cables for the same price you know what i mean one of them was bound to work and one did the other one Diddish, and the other one was just an extension cable I use around the place. Okay, if we go into just a roundup on so things like key features on that cable, the HDMI one is first certified HDMI 2.1 fiber cable, which has passed the certification test of HDMI forum authorized test center. So they specify this. This ensures that the cable supports all HDMI 2.1 functions. So when specified, you hold accountable specifications, okay? So another thing is it's also an ultra high speed cable with a 48 gigabits a second bandwidth, which supports 8K at 60 hertz and 4K at 120 hertz resolution. It's also capable of supporting up to 10k resolution and longer length lossless digital audio the use of fiber optics in the cable makes it immune to electromagnetic interference okay so a bit more about this cable on a side note because they want 220 freaking smackaroons for it now you better know about it additionally the cable is backward compatible with hdmi 2.0 1.4 1.3 1.2 .1 and 1.1 making it versatile and compatible with a wide range of devices. It also supports various gaming features such as VRR, ALLM, QFT, QMS, and more, which provides a high quality gaming experience. Okay, so finally, and not this one, y'all, if we go back to our favorite one over here, Finally, the Bridgie Fiber HDMI 2.1 cable is designed to be durable and of high quality. It is extremely flexible and slim, which makes it perfect for home theater, HD conferencing, and other audio visual applications. Another reason why I wanted to get one of these cables to safeguard myself 20 meters long that I may need to use it for some sort of presentation one day in the future cross our fingers never know i get important yo okay and that draws us to a conclusion around this cable which you shouldn't spend more than 75 to 100 bucks for a 20 meter one in this day and age australian dollars if you're spending more shop around please play to the spec and get yourself a bargain don't overpay otherwise you won't be overstepping then in any bad way and that brings us uh i don't know how to put this to the most Confucius bullshit I have seen in the history of the internet, okay? And that's, um, I look for them. The point of these internet cables, so that RJ45 cables, and they are like your LAN connection for your internet in the back of your computer, not your wired, wireless, sorry, but your wired connection. I like about being wired and I am always wired. I got these for uh, price or performance, five meters at 14.95 or 15 feet, okay? That's pretty pricey in some ways. They're getting pricier right now. So if you want a CAT cable, specifically what is a CAT 8, ethernet cable get one now before the prices are gone through the roof now that these are becoming a standardized thing they want to raise those prices up just a little bit where otherwise it's all the same 
fucking thing. I sorry I swore guys. Um I'll get one F bomb and there it is, okay? I'm gonna give you guys a rundown of what's essentially in this material here. The Cat 8 Ethernet cable is five meters, fifteen feet long, and comes with a gold plated RJ45 connector. It supports high data transmission speeds of up to 2000 megahertz and up to 40 gigabits per second due to its four shielded pair cables SFTP and single strand OFC 26 AWG cable. There's some more marketing material in relation to it, multi-shielding and more high performance, stronger anti-interference. And this is all true, right? The copper is essentially thicker and real copper that is less likely to have a signal obstructing it because of it. And it's also the way they are twisted okay in the in the pairs okay and again specifying here 40 gigabits a second 2000 megahertz transfer and this is essentially what i'm using this for okay cat 8 okay because what is standard in the home is your cat 5e your cat 6 now i'll tell you this forget about cat 7 forget about cat 6 go straight to don't collect 200 dollars don't pass go whatever the analogy is you want to run home with cat a yo all right let's go again no rigid digi um rigid digi is a bridging fucking hdmi cable we got there whoops i said ah f bomb again i apologize but yeah it's gold plated yo and the cable is thicker than other 32 awg ethernet cables providing faster and more stable data transmission it is Compatible with various devices, devices such as routers, DSL modulation controllers, NAS, network adapters, hubs, servers, laptops, smart TVs, and printers. The cable has, and this is where it comes down to Cat 8 Ethernet cables, okay? For it to get the 40 gigabits a second, RJ45, uh, at the 2000 megahertz and you want to be rest assured that it's past a spec it's we've been told the specs and you're told the specs for days in relation to these on amazon but what you want to specifically look for is that the cable has been tested with a fluke professional cable analyzers and is individually certified under strict industrial standards as a result t ia 10g patch cord or channel so this is the type of stuff that you're looking for in relation to it and if we go back to uh so here we go it's got all the little uh various uh outlets it can go into it's a plug that goes into it and it works generally it's backwards compatible as well so you spend an extra two three bucks on these Okay, you're set for the next 20 years according to the way the NBN is working in Australia. We are coming to the end of what has been a marathon tutorial on cables and how best to go about cable relations, okay? Because cable relations are not integrations and it's not a brand, okay? But one of the best brands, if you want to get yourself a VR cable that doesn't cost you an arm and a leg, is through cable creations and that's all i'm going to say y'all i hope you got something out of this video cable creations is one of the better ones it's also one of the highest i spent more money on this than i did on the 20 meter hdmi cable ak10k that is now 230 dollars or so so shop around be wise be smart you're imparted with the knowledge that i possess it's not much, I know, but it gets me through the day and I save the bobber too because all of that and I still paid less than the cable is now. So yeah, my name's Seb Luca. Thanks for joining us at the Technos Corner and have a great day. Don't forget to hit that like and sub button and peace out. Bye.